Hi, this is Mr. Weston. Today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on Justify Triangle Congruence. This was requested by Leb5624. Thanks for requesting this video, and if you have your own video to request, make sure to leave a comment below. This is actually a really tough Khan Academy. There's just a lot of language around it, and it's, it's hard to sift through the information, so I understand why this was requested as a video. I'm going to try to break it down as simply as possible and gloss over a lot of stuff that you don't need to know. So we're given this triangle here, uh, two triangles, and we're told that they're going to be congruent, right? And it's kind of laying out the proof for it. If I were doing this, I would just see that we have a side and an angle and a side, okay? So you see there, we have an angle in between these. This is side angle, side congruence, and I would call it good. But we're going to do a proof here, and we're going to analyze how they did the proof and justify why they're able to make some of these claims. So the first thing it does is it kind of transforms one on top of the other. So it takes, uh, I can't remember which one it moves. It, it does a transformation so that A gets moved over to D and they call that A prime. Okay, so we're taking the ABC triangle and we're moving it directly on top of the DEF triangle. Okay, so there it is, both of them on top. If you were to do two different colors, it would look like this, okay? So then you can see the green from the overlap of the two triangles. Okay, that's not too super important. Um, that's the first thing it's saying. One of the things it's saying, though, if you're looking at the drawing, why it has question marks, is if you're not, if you're not told any information about the sides and you just know that angle A and angle D are, are the same, then we don't know exactly where point C is going to overlap with F and how where point B is going to overlap with uh, E. So part of this is it tells us that it does overlap, looking at the second drawing, step two, that A and, sorry, with B and E overlap because of this, because that side is the same. So it's not here, it's not here. They have the same side length, so they have to match up right there. And then step C, sorry, step three, it's talking about C and F, and it's the same deal. So um, before it was a question mark, look up here. It's a question mark because if we don't know the side length, then we don't know exactly where C is, but we do know the side length. So we go to this step, and I'm just looking at the drawing here, and you can see that it's given that the side length is the same. And if it's on that same angle and the side length is the same, then they must overlap. Okay, so now we just need to justify it for step three, that final step with C and F, or sorry, C prime and F on top of each other. Why are they on top of each other? Well, it's because they're the same distance away from D and they're on the same ray. When it says along the same ray, I found that confusing at first, but basically it's just saying it's on the, it has the same angle, okay? So it's on the same directional path. Another way to say, okay, there's an angle that it shares between them and it has that same distance, Therefore, it's the same point. So we're going to choose A for this one. Um, C and F, uh, C prime and F lying on this intersection of circles. When it's talking about intersection of circles, uh, let's see, with um, centered at D. So in order for that one to work, i got to remember here. I'm going to try to get this lined up more exactly. Almost got it. There, okay. So if it's talking about being centered at the intersection of two circles, and I think it's like one, and then we have another one I think it's talking about from centered at D and E. Okay, so there's a, a circle centered at D, and yeah, we can see that the radius, that's a really bad circle. <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, so here's the red circle. Okay, so it's actually a pretty big, big circle centered at D. So we see, yeah, we know the, the length of the radius for that one. This is for justification of B and why it doesn't work. Okay, so this part of it works. But if we were to draw the second circle centered at E, like it suggests, and it's like, okay, if we draw a circle like this, okay, it's the intersection of those two circles, okay? But the problem is we don't know this radius right here, okay? So we can't use that justification because that's an unknown radius. So instead, we're going to say, okay, it's option A because we know that it's along the same ray and it's the same distance. It's a more simple explanation. And then C doesn't work um, because it's not the intersection of two rays because we don't know anything about, let me erase all this. We don't know, we don't know anything about the second ray. OK, 
Okay, we don't know anything about this second angle. That angle, unknown. We don't know about it, so we can't say it's the intersection of those two rays because we don't know anything about that one right there, the one I just erased. Okay, so that's going to be the correct answer. And we got our next question. Okay, so now we have two more, and you can tell if I were to do this, I would say, okay, all three sides are the same. Whoops, not side angle. It would just be side, side, sides. They have all three sides, side, side, side. Okay, so we're going to see how they justify it here. They're going to map it. They're going to put one on top of the other, rigid transformations. And then they're going to say that um, A, so they move A on top of D. So they call that A prime and D. And then basically what it's saying is B prime and E are going to be the same because of this shared side. Okay, that shared side is exactly the same. So we have those two points locked in, and it's saying, where C? I don't know, okay? Because technically, you could have a triangle that looks like this or like that, okay? So that's why it's like, where C? We don't know. And so we need a further step to justify where exactly it is to make sure it's congruent, that it lines up with F, because that's the whole point. We want to make sure that C is the same distance as F. So it says C prime and F are on the same side of DE, then C prime equals F. Okay, and the reason why C prime equals F is you can see that, let me erase this, is because it has the same distance away. Okay, so if, if it's on this left side, okay, left side, then we know it's equal because it's got two different sides that are like rigid. It's not, not going to move and it has to match up with F because it shares those sides. Okay, but if we go over here, okay, Let's say it ended up on the wrong side. That was like the first, like that drawing I showed you. is like the question mark, which side is it on? If it is on this side, then you can do a transformation. It says you can reflect it across DE. DE is this line. And it's going to end up in the same spot. Okay, so if it ends up on this side, you can just do one more transformation. That's all it's saying. And it's going to be fine. So then you'd call it C double prime. And then it's going to match up based on the same reason for step two. Okay, so we need to say, oh, oh, step one. We didn't even need to look at step two or three. Okay, so what fact can we use to justify step one? Step one um, is this one. And it says that we knew where B prime was. Okay, and how do we know that? Well, it's because A, B, and D, E are the same length. So these two sides... So that's AB and DE. Those are the both the same side because of that little line right there. So let's go ahead and look for that answer. So AB and DE in segments with the same length are congruent. That's the reason why, okay? We don't really need to know anything about AC or these other lengths because step one is talking about how do we know where B prime and E, why they overlap, okay? So that's... That's the reason why for that one, step one, we're only concerned about that step. Next one, okay, if I were looking at this one, I would just say this is a side, there's an angle, and a side. And we see that's the same on both of those, side angle, side congruence. Okay, so I like having that as a frame of mind as I begin. And if you need more information on side angle, side, I do other triangle congruence videos if you want to check those out. Just do a search on my main page. Uh, so here's a rough uh, outline of the... The proof, we can map ABC using a sequence of rigid transformations that A prime equals D. Okay, so we're matching up the angles. B prime and E are on the same ray. Okay, so it's this the same ray stuff is probably confusing for many people. So first off, we're going to map these over. Okay, and then if it's talking about it's on the same ray, it just means it's in the same like direction because of the angle. Okay, so if it's like, oh, it's on the same ray, same ray, that thing, it's just saying because we mapped A prime onto D and that this angle's the same, then there's two rays here. There's one. I'll make the other one in blue. Here's the other one. We have two rays, and those points are going to be on the same ray because that angle is the same right there. Now, again, it's like, where's B? Where's C? We need side information for that to know exactly where they are. But that's just step one of the proof. We can easily do it with side angle side, um, but they're going to do it a different ways. So as a result, okay, you can see here, it says, this is just like our first one. BE 
is equal to, or sorry b prime is equal to e because of that shared side and then i'm guessing c is going to say the same thing because of that shared side how do we show the triangles were congruent well we mapped one figure onto the other using any kind of transformation well I, we didn't use any kind of transformation um we used a sequence of rigid transformations not any tra we didn't use a dilation okay dilation would be a type of transformation we map one figure onto the other using rigid transformation yes we use rigid transformations let me just check see we showed that all corresponding sides had equal lengths and all corresponding angles had equal measures we didn't do that we only used three measures a side an angle and a side we didn't prove all the sides and all the angles okay i just scrolled up just to take a look at that first picture again let me do that <laughs> kind of probably giving you vertigo or making you dizzy sorry about that so yeah we didn't find all the other sides we only did it in three steps Okay, so we just used rigid form transformations. We didn't use dilations, which is a type of transformation, but it's not rigid. We want to make sure the integrity of the triangles are kept intact. What triangles do we show are congruent? Triangles where one pair of corresponding sides have the same length and one pair of corresponding angles have the same measure. No. Okay, we did two uh, corresponding sides and one corresponding angle. Triangles where two pairs of corresponding sides have the same length and including corresponding angles have the same measure. B. Okay, all triangles, no, we didn't do that because that's, you know, that's not what we did. We only did uh, two sides and the angle in between. All right, last question, here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, looking at this, ooh, this one's interesting. We have an angle, side, angle, okay? Angle with a side shared in between. So let's take a look here. Um, <clears throat> we can map using a sequence of rigid transformations a prime is equal to D and B prime equals E. Now, the reason why I can say that B prime is equal to E, I change positions if my <laughs> voice sounds different. So A prime equal to D, okay? That's one we just put on top of the other one. And then we know that this one's equal because of that shared side. And we can put an angle, any angle we want, okay? So that side's only the important one. And we know it's the same because it's locked in. It's that same side length. But again, it's like, hey, where's C? We don't know the angle in between. So which side is it on? So we're going to take a look. So then we know that if it's on the same side, okay, C and F are on the same side of D, then C prime equals F. Now, here's the thing about this. It's not like the other one where it's like, oh, we have the same side information. This time it's just the angle. So that's going to change our answer for the last part. Let's see which question it wants to justify step three. Okay, so step three is, oh, I should probably pull up the picture for step three. I would show the drawing for every single one. That's gonna be really critical for you. So step three is, if it's on the other side, that's, then we can reflect it, okay? So it's like, oh, it's a question mark which side it's on, this one and this one. But if it is on this side, we can just reflect it over and then it's gonna match up. And then we can say it's congruent. We'll call it, c double prime because we did two transformations so what is the justification that c prime equals f c prime and f are the same distance from e along the same ray that is wrong because i mean after the after you establish that they're congruent then you can say that but initially we don't know the information about the sides how long is that side no clue okay so we can't say it's the same distance away because we don't know what the distance is so that one is wrong a is going to be wrong there because we don't know anything about the distance. Okay, I'm going to jump down to C and then I'll go to B at the end. C prime and F are the at the intersection of the same pair of rays. Okay, actually, I want to go to B. <laughs> so B, both C prime and F lie on the intersection points of circles centered at D and E with the right eye DF and EF respectively. There are two such possible points, one on each side of DE. Okay, this one will work if we know that the, the lengths of those, so we said centered at D and E. So here's my D, and like, okay, so this, it's saying if we had a circle like that with this radius, but we don't know that radius, and then another circle like this with this radius, but we don't know that radius, notice how there's two spots where it intersects. Obviously, my circles are terrible, okay, but if you have two circles, it could intersect at two possible locations, with those radii, but the problem is we don't know the lengths of those radii. You have to know that, okay? So we can't use that one um, because we don't know the lengths of the radii, the, the radius of each circle. So instead, we're gonna choose option C. They're at the intersection of the same pair of rays. 
How do I know that? Well, if you're looking at the ray, the ray means it's going in the same direction. Oftentimes when you say it with this exercise, if it's saying the ray, it's talking about the angle measure. Is the angle measure the same? So here's the direction of the ray, okay? Now, we don't know anything about the distance. So we're like, is C double prime here? Is C double prime over here? Okay, we don't know. The, the point is, if we know that we have a second ray that is going in the same direction of it, well, that was way too big here. Let me try to do it like this. There we go. Okay, and again, if you only had the green, you would be like, is uh, C double prime over here? Is it over in this area? Okay, you don't know. But the thing is, if there, if you have two known rays that are going that direction, even though you don't know the distance, there's only one possible spot they meet up, and that's right there. And then you can be like, ah, now I know where it is, okay? So that's what it's talking about for this one. When it's talking about the rays, it's talking about the direction, it's talking about angles. So we can check this answer and be pretty confident that is correct. So we made it through. I hope that made it a little bit more clear. This is a tough one just because the language used in it. Uh, thanks again for requesting this video. Uh, make sure to request your own video if you need it, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.